Hey guys, I want to do a video on there is no such thing as an ex-Christian or a former believer. Uh, there are many that profess to have been Christians. There are many that grew up in the Christian faith in their home. There are many people that went to church. But what I've found is like there's an atheist guy that goes around doing these uh, uh, debates. And he claims to have been a pastor and he was a Christian and... But what he believes comes out in how he speaks. Things like, um, God knows you're a sinner, but then commands you to keep these rules or he'll throw you and burn you forever in fire. You know, that shows me right there that he never trusted Christ. He never believed the gospel. The gospel, again, is good news. It is, uh, the whole Bible is to show us our guilt and how we can't save ourselves through our flesh, through performance. So God came in the form of sinful flesh as a man, laid his life down, he was buried, wore all our sins in his body, and rose again for our justification, so that all who put their trust in them can be declared sinless and righteous in the sight of God, positionally, forever, okay? So that is the gospel. He's perfected forever them that are sanctified, and it tells us how we're sanctified. We are made holy, declared holy, sanctified, by God, for God, through the offering of Jesus' body, once for all. All right? So, uh, people confuse the Christian walk of how we should live. Because, see, once you're saved, he, was, he could just take you to heaven. But the thing is, we have a purpose here. Once we're saved, we're supposed to glorify God, be a good testimony and a witness to give others the good news. Right? So what it tells me is they never trusted Christ. They were never born of God. It says as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. All right? So it's people that are believing on him. They are trusting in what Christ did for them, not anything they're doing for God. And if you add any work at all, you have no grace. Christ is of no effect to you. You're falling from grace. Uh, it, 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 you can't, he died in vain. I don't care what you add to it. But the big thing now is the redefinition of repentance. Repenting from sin, which sin is transgression of the law. So to repent of a sin is to keep a law. Repent of breaking God's law, therefore keep the law. But by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So the repentance from sin is an ongoing process that goes on for the rest of our lives. Once we're saved, that's a process that just continues as we grow in grace. Some remain babes in Christ, carnal Christians, and so forth. But my point is, if you ever trusted Christ, I'm going to show you here, it's God that does that work in you. Okay? Basically, you can't make yourself decide. All right? I want to believe it. You can't make yourself decide. God has to give you repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. That's true repentance. Stop trusting what you're trusting in. You're trusting in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, which is the, the gospel that's behind me. We are it, He dispensed grace to us. All right? It's crazy that people can't divide what was written under the law from what's given to the church. You have to be part of the church before you start worrying about changing behaviors. You're not even a Christian until you've trusted only and what Jesus did. I don't care about your straw man. I don't care that you can't get it. The gospel's not after man at all. It, it's not going to make sense to the natural mind. It's foolishness to them that are perishing. They're religious. They can't get it. They, they're reprobates. They're ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The simplicity in Christ that he did it all. So I'll show you here that saved people have an unction from the Holy One. God preserves us. It says he, that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. So if you were a Christian and now you're not, that means Jesus is a liar and he didn't finish the faith he began in you. He who began a good work in you will finish it, right? Until the day of Jesus Christ. So what you're saying is, so it's not possible is what I'm trying to tell you. There are people that thought they understood Christianity, but they didn't. It was just like any other religion. It was based on what man does for God. Until a person has only trusted in what Jesus did, I mean alone, and gets that they're secure. Because if you can lose it, you're not saved. Being saved means rescued from danger with the inability to be in danger. It means you're free from the danger now. You are saved from it. 
So uh, it's very unfortunate, and that's why I preach the gospel. It's amazing how many hate the true gospel. Um, again, it's by the foolishness of preaching we're saved. So I'm here to show you that it's God's word that converts you. All right. It's not anything you're doing. It's not how good a person preaches. God's word must persuade a person that what God promised, the report of his son, is that he gives us eternal life and that life is in his son. It's a free gift. What Christ bore your sin on the cross. He was buried as you, died for you. And when he rose again, you're justified. You're declared righteous because the blood has purged your sins. Purged. Gone. So, uh, and his payment was once for all. So, it, everything you ever did was going to be in the future when he died. People, I, people just can't get that. I did a video on that. You can look that up. So, I'm going to show you. These people were never saved. They never believed. Because, see, the Bible tells us that the unction from the Holy One, the Holy Spirit, keeps convicting us of what is true. It says that the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he'll convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So he convicts the world of sin because they do not believe on Jesus. And they convict the saved of righteousness, their right standing with God and the prince, and judgment because the prince of this world is judged. So the, the word of God, the Holy Spirit, they get you, keep you saved. It's all a work of God. Salvation is of the Lord. Okay? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. All right? So these people that claim to have been Christian, they never were converted. They were never fully persuaded. There's a whole list of people in Hebrews of why they're great people of faith. Abraham, Rahab, so forth. And that they're still talked about today. And it goes to show how they believed God's promises. As Abraham believed God, it's counted to him for righteousness. So the whole point there is to show that what God says he's going to do, he's going to do. And he's trying to tell the Hebrew people, do not trust. And I'm telling you this because I'm going to read some Hebrews here. Do not trust in the dead works of the Levitical temple system and your animal sacrifices. If you willfully sin by rejecting the once for all sacrifice of Jesus, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. He will not accept those sacrifices. You cannot be justified by the law and you'll be lost. You have to trust only in the sacrificial death, burial, and resurrection of Christ alone for your justification. Okay? And once you're saved... God starts dealing with you about how, how he's going to use you in your life. All right? But that's what people are bringing into the gospel and making salvation some process when it's an event. So the only thing you can do, because Jesus said, uh, when, when I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. The only thing we can do is respond to that calling and begin seeking. Okay? He says there's none that seeketh after God. Right? So, Jesus calls us through the Holy Spirit. Now, we should be responding by checking it out. And then it's God's word that gives us faith and convicts us and converts the soul. All right? Now, God's word does not fail. And Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. So, anyone that says, I used to be Christian and now I'm a happy atheist, I had a deconversion, a eureka, I... Uh, you know, realize there is no God, it's all a lie, Jesus is just some crazy Jew, you know, whatever they say. They were never saved. They didn't lose salvation, they were never saved. Why? Because they believed they were doing something for salvation. And they chose to believe, and so now they choose not to. That's not what happens. God's word converts you, and it's to the soul. Now, there are people that get saved and they backslide. There's people that get saved and get angry at God at, because of something terrible that happens. But they know in their heart who Jesus is and what they did, what God did for us. So the, it's not possible is what I'm trying to tell you through Scripture. So I'm going to give you verses, all right? No such thing as a real Christian that left Christianity. Not possible. There's... Uh, uh, like professing Christians that were religious and were in the church, 
But I'm telling you, most of the Christians now aren't saved. They're not Christians. I have to say Christians because they profess to be. But they don't even believe the gospel. They don't. They don't they, they don't they have every reason why it's not true. Oh, that's a license to sin. Oh, that's easy believism. Okay, do it your way. You you bring your works and then you will have no grace and no savior. Let's see how that works out for you. All right? And we already know there's gonna be tons of false prophets that come to him and say, Lord, Lord, look at all we did in your name. They were preaching and doing all this stuff. Worker of iniquity. They preach his works. A friend of mine the other day said, in works, they deny me. And I almost fell out. Because it's like, because they're working for salvation, it denies him. You know, there's another way of looking at these things. And turn the, the this is the revelation I had a long time ago. And I had only heard one other person since I've said it say this. That they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. That doesn't mean they abuse it. These are false prophets. It's not they're abusing grace and sinning. Where sin abounds, grace is much more abound. It means they say, no, no, it can't be just grace, because that would mean you can be lascivious. It's not grace, because that's a license to sin. So they turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. That's why it says we're slanderously reported as some affirm that we say, let us do evil so good may come. His damnation is just. They turn the grace of God into lasciviousness, not understanding that is the love of God, uh, the love of Christ that constrains us. It is the the uh, goodness of God that leads men to repentance. So uh, I wanted to show you here, not possible. They were never saved. You cannot be unborn, but the Holy Spirit, you can fall into error for a short time. You can backslide, but you can never stop believing Jesus is the Son of the living God and that he's the way to heaven. That's it. You can't. You can't once you're saved. Because the Holy Spirit bears witness. Let me show you this. All right, 1 John 3.21 tells us this. Now, if we're saved, this should be true. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. So when you come out of the condemnation, knowing that you failed the law, through one man's disobedience, Adam all die. And through one man, God in the flesh, Christ Jesus, all live. Okay, so we have confidence towards God. I'm going to do a video on the assurance of salvation and how it's a sin to doubt what God promised, right? So we, when our hearts don't condemn us, we have confidence towards God. Why? Because we're not looking at what we do, but what God already did for us. That is the glorious good news. These people were never saved, all right? Again, no ex-Christians. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So whose power is it to salvation? It's God's power. The gospel, the message of what Christ did for you is God's power for your salvation. See, his wrath was poured on his son. All the payment of all the sin of the whole world was laid upon him. God's not mad. His wrath has been quenched. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the gospel message. They don't get it. Uh, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. It's not of you choosing or deciding. God's word convicts your soul. It converts your soul. Do you understand? It's a work of God that can never be undone. I'll show you a verse in Hebrews there. All right. First John. It is the last time and you've heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it's the last time. Now, anti can mean either against or in place of. All right. They went out from us. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Now, it continues to tell you that if you're saved, the Holy Spirit will confirm your faith. What Christ did for you, your right standing with God, and who Jesus is. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. All right? That's why I don't worry. Because I know some people have fallen into error. And if they hear the gospel I preach, which is the same one Paul preached, the unction from the Holy One's going to bear witness. And if people completely come against it, and not just ask questions, I want people to ask questions. But what about this verse? Good, let's discuss that. 
I want to help people grow in grace. But those that come up and mock it tells me they do not have the unction from the Holy One. Why would you despise so great a salvation, the unspeakable gift that we receive by the foolishness of preaching? See, it's foolishness to them. But they were not of us. They went out from us because they were never of us. Okay? You hearing that? They were never of us. Now, in Hebrews, it confirms we are not as those that draw back under perdition. Why are we? Because we got the Holy Spirit confirming the truth. And so he goes through all these promises that God had made to others in the past and said, see how God kept his promises to these people? It's like an entire chapter, maybe two chapters of great people of the faith because they simply believe what God promised. And so he's trying to tell the Hebrew people, don't trust in your law. When he said he saved you through what his son did, you can rest in that. That's why it talks about we who have believed you enter into rest. We've ceased from our own works as God did from his. Now we're saved unto good works, but it's for him that worketh not. You cannot be working for salvation. Once you're saved, God has a plan for you. And that includes people zealous of good works. But you can't add that to salvation. For him that works is the reward no longer reckoned of grace, but of debt. But for him that worketh not, but believes. So you're not working, but you're believing on the one who justifies the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. God imputes his righteousness. So in Hebrews 10.39, it says, Those of us that are saved, we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Did you hear that? Saved people. We are not of them who draw back under perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So he's warning those people, hey, if God's opened your eyes, right, it's impossible for those people, if God has opened their eyes, proved who Jesus is and what they've done, and they choose to reject it and go back to animal sacrifice, it's impossible to renew them again to repentance, seeing that they crucify the Son of God a second time. Why? Because they're saying the first time death of God's son was not sufficient and actually these animals and my works my not sinning my keeping the mosaic law and these anim this animal blood is more powerful than God's precious son he will not allow their eyes opened again he's warning them he's, he's let you see it now if you if you reject it he's 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 done what he's supposed to do. He's granted you the repentance to acknowledging other truth. Now you can reject it, but if you do, it's impossible to renew them again to repentance. See, and they crucify the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So, uh, it's, it's not possible. It's not possible for a saved person to go back in unbelief and be unsaved. All right? No such thing as an ex-Christian. Let me show you here. This is Psalm 19.7. The law of the Lord is perfect. Now that's not just the Mosaic law. That is the law and the prophets. That's all the scripture. Sometimes it's called the law. Sometimes it's called the oracles of God. Sometimes it's called the uh, written word of God. But that's what it's talking about. Okay. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making wise the simple. God's testimony is sure. All right? It converts the soul. Salvation is of the Lord. Now, faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Now, I'm going to show you one more thing that they, they never... They never believed. Let's look over at Ephesians 1.13. In whom he also trusted. Okay? What you're saying is, I trust that what Jesus did for me gave me eternal life. That is the gospel message. All right? Uh, in whom he trusted. After that, you heard the word of truth. So there's the God's word working. The gospel of your salvation. And whom also, after that, you believed. So you heard the gospel, you believed it, you trusted that he actually gave you eternal life, and you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. What does it say about the Holy Spirit? He gives us an unction 
It bears witness. It testifies to the truth. It convicts us of righteousness and right standing. So these for these atheist former Christians, nonsense. Not ever believers. They thought they got it, but they were never converted by the word of God. If, if it's a work of God, which it is for all saved people, God does that work and it can't be undone because Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. That's why I say you can't lose salvation. See, it's God that's converting. These people think, I'm going to choose to do this and choose to continue to believe and persevere until the end. They, it's all on them. See, but we trust in God. We should have a heart with full assurance of faith because we know it's all a work of God, period. So, not possible, guys. All right. God bless.